away. And here. I missed your name. Let me get my hat. I'm cool. I got my hat. I got my tea. I take four tea bags tonight because when I make a new tea, I just plunk that in with the old one. Um, green tea with also a peppermint herbal tea. I like peppermint mint tea. I'm sort of like making my own mint tea. I love mint green tea. It's my favorite kind of tea, and I can make it just as good as Starbucks, and it costs me a heck of a lot less. Um, all right, so my name is Mr. Mick. Let me open up some information about me. I do this every time, even though you might have watched my other classes. I do this every time because you might be new to this channel and be like, who is this dude? And I swear, I swear. Oh, oh there's a YouTube intro. I don't know where I saved that. Luckily, it was on that list. Um, okay. My name is Mr. Meek. I, is your, oh, Mr. Brian McGinnis is Mr. Mick. I am a um, certified uh, visual art teacher in the state of New Jersey. I teach at a school called Creative Arts Morgan Village Academy. I teach middle school and high school, but I am certified to teach K through 12 in visual arts. Sorry, my camera's a little low because earlier when I was teaching my students, because I do this streaming from home because of the whole pandemic and the remote learning, um, Sometimes I have my, my dog is here and he participates in class. All right, let me, let me cover my picture because I like to get distracted. Never mind. Okay. All right, there we go. I'm looking at you now. <laughs> I have the keyboard. I'm a little clumsy. Uh, this is... Um, okay. Hold on one second. I got a message here from my daughter. Your car is good, right? Um, for my daughter, and just I just had to send that message. I apologize. So yeah, there's a little bit, but this is a live class, okay? And why is it a live class? Why don't I, you know, um, I, I may post, I do some, some things where I record things and do kind of like edited, recorded videos. Um, why am I doing these live? Because uh, I think, and, and well, okay, where was I? <laughs> I get ahead of myself and behind myself and then get, get turned around, and that's just part of who I am. Um, uh, okay, so I'm doing, the, I'm K-12 teacher, and I started doing this remote learning thing with my students. I gotta be careful, because I was working with some, I was doing a project, I have some 3D printers, and I have, um, I was using this wood filler to kind of experiment with painting on the surfaces that I made, and it said, like, don't get it in your eyes, because it's an eye irritant, and my eyes are just itchy, so my mind is automatically, like, what have you done to your eyes? And why is your art teacher talking to you about all this crazy stuff? Because it is a kind of crazy time. It is. And, um, you know, you can embrace the crazy uh, and just say, you know, just live a little bit with the crazy. And now you're here at this art class. Um, so I'm a K-12 to certified art teacher. I've been doing this remote learning thing. And I thought, you know, there might be students out there, kids at home, that would like to have an art class, but for whatever reason, I don't have one now. You know, I know some school districts, um, all kinds of different things are happening all over the place uh, in terms of, and I, I, even before this, some school districts were getting rid of art, you know? Uh, I'm, I think I'm getting messages here from my daughter. Okay, I was worried her car didn't start, but it did. She was just asking me, if I've been starting my car recently, because I don't drive as much, obviously, because I my basically, you know, stay at home policy, right? So she's like, does your car start? Do you start your car frequently enough? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And my dogs are barking out back. And I haven't had enough sleep. And I'm about to teach this class. Hear that? Sound crazy for that reason? I don't know. Um, so... I started doing this remote learning, teaching, remote teaching with remote learning, and I thought about all the students that might need an art class out there or want an art class that don't have one. So that's why I'm here. Hopefully that's why you're here or how you found me. Um, there's my name, there's my email addresses, there's my school. 
Uh, you can join. I have Google Classrooms. You can join one of my Google Classrooms. I have one student who's also a former student of my. Well, a former student. He's still a high school student, but he moved to the West Coast. But he he was nice enough to join my Google Classroom. I told him about it. But he's also really good at art. So hopefully he starts uploading his artwork and watching my videos. I do. <laughs> um, and uh, um, maybe his brother could join the class too. His younger brother who uh, is in middle school, going to be going to high school. And I remember him when he was in sixth grade. So, And he was way better at video games than me. And I like video games. I think they're a lot of fun. I think video games are interactive art. I don't think of them as some distracting time sink. Well, they can be, like anything can be. But I also think of them as maybe the greatest art form because it incorporates every other form of art, writing and drama and dance and music and visual art, all of those things. But the audience members get to interact with it. Um, if you haven't thought about video games that way, uh, I, you know, I think it's a good way to think about them. It, ch it changes the way you feel, might feel about them too. And maybe it gives you a good argument to your parents. Like, hey, listen, listen, this is a f form of interactive art. <laughs> I might go grab one of the dogs in a minute just if they don't stop barking. Um, so, uh, we've been working on the elements of perspective. Let's get back to that. I'm going to pull my screen up here. I'm going to be working on a tablet just because I find that it's easier for me to show you what I'm doing versus using this other camera. I don't feel like uh, whenever I've tried to record myself drawing, um, I think it's better to show you using a digital uh, format because it's easier. Um, this is just a better quality picture to follow along with. Let me start to program. I use a program for any other teachers that are watching this. I use a program called Reflector to get the iPad screen uh, onto my computer. It basically turns the computer into a kind of a, um, uh, it turns the computer into like an Apple TV. I might cut class a little bit shorter today uh, just because I started later. Here are, okay, so there's going to be a little bit of a lag um, between uh, what I'm, the iPad screen and what I'm doing. Let me just make sure we're, okay, let's see how it's set on here so you can see. Because I think it's important for you to be able to see your teacher and interact with your teacher if you want to. Um, now, I know you can't necessarily interact with me because chat is disabled and comments are disabled because that's part of YouTube's policy um, when you're teaching when you have content that's made for kids and that's what my content is made for k-12 but uh, if you join my Google classroom and if you're pretty young like under 13 have a parent uh, send me an email to request the classroom code you can send me your artwork you can even email me your artwork without joining my Google classroom I don't really mind if you want to send me your artwork and get some feedback from me and say mr. Mick I've been working on the elements of perspective and what do you think of my progress so far and look, I tried to apply the elements of perspective to this example. And you can get my feedback. I think that's the benefit of having a class. That's why YouTube videos are great, and they're a great resource and tool. And you can keep working, but it's also good to get feedback from other people and encouragement from the teacher. And that's why I don't think teachers will ever, you know, there's there's talk of using the Internet and, and artificial intelligence and stuff getting rid of people. But... Um, they haven't figured out the formula for creativity. So as an art teacher and an artist and a creative person that has 3D printers behind me and is working over the internet or is teaching over the internet to you, I'm like, well, how can I, as someone who is using all this technology and so invested in it, why do I seem, why don't I get and see that this is the future? And I'm like, well, it, it's, it's a tool, but it doesn't get rid of, the importance of having a teacher. So yeah, so it's I'm I'm live because uh, I want you to know that if you show up here every day, uh, or if you show up here for class, you're going to be seeing the live version of me. You're not going to see a pre-recorded version of me, and you're going to see all of my goofy mistakes and mess ups as well as my the good stuff. Right? You're going to see everything because that's what we are human beings we are everything we we look at this media which is very edited um, YouTube and the television and even artwork itself is so heavily edited you know you can see here 
all of my sketching and stuff. In the end, it's going to be a finished portrait, a, a finished portrait, a finished piece, and it'll look like this kind of like to me a really cool like landscape, a futuristic thing. And people are like, wow, that's so cool. I wish I could draw like that. And I go, well, you know what it started as. <laughs> um, not to throw any shade at it. Um, it started as one of McIntyre's simple examples of this this series of cans that are moving back in space that I decided to like keep adding to and changing and you know that you can see even right here you can see like that first can is right here <laughs> this second can I just chopped part of the end off this can I just tapered a little bit and added a little added like a um, like a uh, tower I made it into a tower the other one I turned into a foreshortened square <laughs> and so it's uh, and then I just kind of let my imagination keep going. Um, and I think that's what's so great about these elements of perspective of McIntyre and this approach of McIntyre. Here's this Dave McIntyre. Um, you know, I've reached out to uh, McIntyre through his website. I, I got this book like 10 years ago. I, I sent away in the mail for it. And it was it was this book and also the, the book of Walt Stanchfield, the work of Walt Stanchfield that really influenced me. This is that great shorthand version of this, okay? So if you've watched the early exa earlier examples, I talk about things like surface and size and surface lines and overlap. And I remember Stanchfield used to talk about it in this kind of way. He would put these kind of shorthand examples down. Um, and if you think about this, it's like, what is the simplest way to kind of say, like, where do we see surface and size? Or what is the symbol for surface and size? And I always thought of it, um, let's see if I can find the example here right here, right? This is the kind of more elaborate version of that. But surface can be as simple as, uh, overlap can be as simple as that, right? Um, you know, if this is a box and that's a box, there's this overlap that happens right there, okay? So um, if you're new to my class, um, it's a good idea to go back to some of the first classes where I give overviews of these elements of perspective and stuff like that. I'm going to start off with a few examples here. I may go back to that drawing. Um, there's a lot of good examples there. There's some really good examples here. Actually, kind of like every single example in this lesson, I tend to do one or two examples per lesson uh, just because um, You know, I don't want to do, do the whole book. You can buy the book and do the book yourself. Um, you know, and I, I want people to do that because it was such an inspiration for me. And I want other art teachers to, to, you know, get access to that as well. So it's like I'm not trying to, you know, uh, just teach the entire book. I'm trying to get at some of the really important examples of, from it. Um, I'm going to go with this stack of box. Well, you know what I'm going to do first? This flag. Okay. Now, it's an interesting way to think about this flag because there's some subtle things in this. And I think we did a flag example earlier. I even put a flag example in my, like, cans that I turn into the city. Um, let me see what, what I'm working here. Let's see. Um, let's see flag. Okay. Um, in this flag example, right, so it's basically like a backwards S connected to a forwards S right that's the kind of way this works backwards s into a forward s and then we drop these verticals down we have this that wraps around here this uh, drops down and notice there's some overlap here right i drew through like it was made of glass but there's some overlap going on there right and then we drop this straight line down and there's some overlap that happens right there and boom Right, so just want to close this down so uh, okay, so that's the simple flag example. Really, really simple example. I might take my eraser or if you have a paper towel or something to just lighten this up here because we don't want to emphasize the drawing through. That's just there as a way for us to line things up. And then I can come along, drop in my verticals. Now this one, this example, um, for some would seem super simple, 
and that sure it is very simple, but for some you might find it to be tricky. And the problem that you're probably having is that you've, um, oh, it's, it's this, it's this line, right? You might have something like that going on. See, what has to happen is this needs to go up this way and then back that way and then back this way. This is what creates that kind of overlap that happens there. And if this is too straight, then you're not getting that overlap. You're not, that, the S is not dramatic enough. But another, there's another way to think about this, and I don't think I saw McIntyre talk about it, but I think it, it kind of gives another hint as to if you're having trouble with it, how you might think about it. There's, there's an implied foreshortened circle there. There's an implied foreshortened circle here, and there's an implied foreshortened circle there, right? Do you see that? It's kind of like the stacked hands moving back in space. And then if we just emphasize this one, we emphasize that, we can see that um, it's really kind of a foreshortening example and overlap too, right? There's some foreshortening, oh, there's some overlap and some foreshortening going on here, if I was to say, to use my symbols. Like, which elements of perspective? Question mark. Um, foreshortening, uh, overlap and foreshortening are both being used, right? He puts a little star, you know, back here. So you might you might put some other stars, like it's kind of blowing in, in the night. Um, you also might, um, I'm going to use my eraser just to lighten things up. One way to do this is to use this kind of eraser if you have one. If, oh, there's a dog hair. Uh, a meter eraser, they're good because you can just do like this on the surface and lighten things up. Um, and other ways just to use like a, even just a, uh, uh, just be careful, because on these ways, just do it lightly. Don't, don't go too heavy. Uh, these white erasers that are on like mechanical pencils or if, if you have one, um, oh, they're called, uh, I think they're called plastic erasers, these. Um, but you just, you know, you want to lighten things up. Just lighten the drawing up a bit. Lighten the drawing a bit, why don't you? I am publicly doing awful accents because even though my last name is McAndrews and I am a Mick, yeah, I don't know how to do a good accent for Irish accents. Well, the people in Ireland watching this, and I know I have, like, no people watching I have like one or two people watching this. Even my student who's on, on Google Classroom probably hasn't watched this or isn't watching it live. It's all right. Someday, I'm going to be a famous YouTuber for drawing. Was it plug? No. I don't really care. If there's one person out there that learns these principles and elements of perspective and becomes really interested in drawing because of this class, then, then it's worth it. If that person doesn't come along for 10 years, it's still worth it. Because um, that's the whole, this these ideas and this way of drawing inspired me. It inspired me to become a teacher. And that's what I do for a living. And I don't do YouTube for a living. I, luckily, I don't have to. Um, some people do. And that's great. And some people do art on YouTube for a living. And that's great. But um, I teach art, um, like in person. And... Uh, um, like I said, K to 12. And, uh, but it was these ideas that inspired me to do that. Um, so if I get to share these ideas, I'd share these ideas just for the simple fun of have, being able to share them. <laughs> That's all it requires from me. Um, and also, like as, as I said to my other st my students who I teach in, in the morning, um, I've been sitting and working on this stuff, like sitting and working with you all um, has led me to, this is a piece of art from one of my students actually, I don't think she's mind me showing it. Um, you have to remember this, she personified uh, the coronavirus into like this wampum monster. Um, but uh, it led me to this, which I'm sorry.
But um, this started as just this simple example I was showing all of you, and I was like, well, let's turn this into something really cool. Um, so uh, the example itself was pretty simple, but I always, you know, because these are visual problems, and, and I think no matter how many times I do them, I still find them to be really interesting. Like, I'm going to work on that stock the boxes above there. And that's a tricky example. It's going to be tricky again for me. And I've done this a million times. <laughs> and I have to re-solve re it. So here's just some other things. This is um, just to show you some doodles that I was working on. Um, I was playing around with making some drawings on, on my phone. And, and um, this is an Amushkin Chim collab. That's, that's my nickname for my fiance and her nickname for me. And uh, this is just kind of like a weird caricature thing, this skull thing, and, and that's her um, little sketch of me. She might actually not be happy with what I'm showing you. <laughs> she, like, she wasn't the happiest with her drawing, but she's really good at drawing. And I feel like she's um, really good at drawing, um, drawing things in like a pleasing kind of cute way, which I struggle with. And she just does it so naturally. So I really, I really like the way that she draws. Um, this, uh, I think I might have done this with my freshman, actually. It was a, one of the examples. But um, it was about linear perspective. I'm not sure if I did this. I didn't, I didn't do this with you guys, right? Uh, I did something similar, which was the, the uh, yesterday's example. But this is kind of like a, a later example from McIntyre. But I thought of like, well, what if this candle became a person? personified it into a person and like what if they're quarantined but you know they're letting their light shine anyway and this is something that everyone has to do um is to even though you're you're dealing with whatever you're dealing with some people are you know dealing with people being sick and some people are dealing with um fears and worries and some people are dealing with um you know just being stuck at home and being lonely it's like well, you know, how can we how can we find that positive light that we can let shine, no matter what our circumstance might be under the current crisis, you know? So, um, but, um, you know, I've really um, come to appreciate my time doing this. And uh, I know I only have 43 subscribers, and I'd like to have more subscribers, because I think that's really cool. Um, but... Still 43 people, and you know, I have no idea who, who actually watches this. I don't have comments turned on, as I said, because of the YouTube, um, you know, uh, policy protecting people and stuff, which is which is the right way to be. Um, okay, so back to the flag example. Now you can um, feel free, and I'm sorry, I step up onto my soapbox and, and do my little preachy bits. Um, it's just part of my. Come with, come with me. Um, I am just putting in some designs here. It's kind of like, you know, for me, the Irish flag, right? Just the three colors. Um, you could make an American flag. One thing to think about is if you draw through here, think about how this line, I'm sorry, my sisters are, where is this? How is this one? This is the middle one. Well, this is a little high. This should be a little bit lower. So I'm making them watch Mr. Mick make a mess. <laughs> this is drawing. Okay, let me get back to the actual flag structure here. And then here. Um, maybe I'm overcomplicating such a simple example. Um, I never said I was the best, most efficient teacher. I just, you know, have patience with me, please. Uh, but this wraps here. This wraps here. This wraps here. Oh, I'm sorry. I just am frustrated. Okay. This is here. This here. This here. Okay, this one goes down here. <laughs> can I turn off the can I turn off so no messages show up? I'm gonna try to do that real quick. I'm sorry. It's just um, that's bothering me, and I'm turning that off. I don't want that to happen here anyway. Because uh, you know it's fair enough. They're having their conversation, and they they have a right to their conversation. But um, I don't know. notifications. I am really 
screen and guess what no notifications <laughs> uh, maybe I'll leave it on the lock screen okay so now I finally solved something that has annoyed me for forever for forever okay sorry let's get back to our little problem and now a message from our sponsors um, yeah, so you can see me struggling mightily, striving mightily, str struggling. Okay, I need a heavier eraser, I think. led the way all the time. Sometimes Jack leads the way with the barking and sometimes Pepper does. Mainly Jack. The odd time Pepper actually starts things off. All right. I got them placed properly finally. I didn't need to go through all that, but I, I think, you know, I, I've heard it said before about drawing that um, to draw something well, for example, like um, if you're looking at me right now, you can't see my other ear, right? But in order to imagine could you imagine having if you were doing a drawing of my face you can imagine where the other ear is in your mind i've heard it said of good drawing that you can picture what's going on on the parts of the things that you don't see for example we can't really see you know in here on the flag right but if we can draw through there Right? All of a sudden, I've made it like it's made out of glass. I made it kind of see-through. Then um, I'm picturing what's going on in that part that we normally couldn't see in order to line things up properly. Right, So I'm kind of trying to do that. I'm kind of trying to see into the parts of the thing that we wouldn't see, and I kind of turn on my x-ray vision to do that. And that's when I say drawing through. That's what I'm asking you to do is kind of like draw through the, the, the shape. As, pretend like it's uh, made out of glass. All right. So, this example. This example is a tricky example. I'm going to give you a heads up. It may take you a few times of redrawing it. That's okay. It may take me a few times of redrawing it here. That's okay. Um, the, I think one of the important things about this is get the boxes stacked properly so that feels right, and then worry about the ribbons that come down off of it, okay? So let's start with the first here, and we're going to start with one of these division signs. Now we can also think about this in terms of the compass. One, two, five, six. So uh, that's my my water heater. <laughs> All kinds of things going on here, right? You can tell my production quality is just. You know, my budget is just amazing. Although my fiance did buy me this cool microphone. I'm putting it closer. Hopefully that deals with the problem of the volume. Um, but we can also think of this uh, bo the top of the box like the, like the compass, right? So see this, this and this, are, they're parallel. But they also mimic this direction of the compass. The same as the other side, this and this are parallel. And it's mimicking that direction of the compass, OK? So we're going to drop down some verticals here. Um, and then the bottom is going to follow that as well, right? Look at that. This and this and this and this, OK? Um, so that's our first box. I feel pretty good about that box. <laughs> uh, one thing that I noticed now, I hadn't noticed about this example in all the times I've done it before, is that McIntyre almost seems like he made the first box kind of like shorter and taller, and then the next one's a little bit thinner, and then the next one's thinner than that. It's like he's creating a variety in the different size of the boxes. And I had never noticed that. In all the times I've done this example before, I never noticed that variety. I think oftentimes I probably draw them all the same thickness. 
But let me, you know, let's really try to think about moving forward. Let's think about that next, um, that next box as being thinner. And that might be too thin. I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. All right. But, okay, what's going on here? We have some of this, right? I think that's a great shorthand. You know, and, and, th and that's another thing. It's like, why am I doing this? Because I'm learning something about this that I've taught many times. I'm learning something new. Every time I do it, I'm learning something new. And it's such a si seemingly simple example. But um, there is a sophistication to it. Your average person, without understanding the elements of perspective, your, your average person can't draw this. Even a lot of people who like art and like to draw are going to have a tough time with this. Um, because you have to, this is a tricky visual problem. A lot of, all of these are visual problems that um, McIntyre's put together and they, um, they need to be solved using the elements of perspective and uh, just being patient with it. Now you could just copy it. You're like, well, I don't use the elements of perspective. Like, I've gotten through, like, I'm a professional artist, Mr. Mick, and uh, I don't need the elements of perspective. I mean, I... And the thing is, what I'll say about that is this. You're right. Probably, you, if you're a professional artist or you're someone that's really good at drawing, you might not need the elements of perspective. Um, but chances are, you are already doing this stuff. You're already using the elements of perspective in some way, and you just haven't thought of it in terms of that's what it is so I would say I would submit that um, you know the reason that you might feel like you don't need it is because you're already using it if that makes sense uh, okay so notice these are parallel okay and if your box is and I'm spending a lot of time on just building these boxes because th we want to rush into the details of things you know we want to get into the the interesting bow. We want to get into the, the, the ribbon as it goes down. And that stuff's all great and good and fun. But if we don't start with the right foundation and the right perspective and getting our angles right and the overlap right. Excuse me. Oh my gosh. I apologize. If we could get rid of those things, then I. If we could go right to the details, and for some people, like they're going to start drawing, the, like if they're doing a portrait, they might start on the eye and build their way out from the eye, and the, before the, you know it, they have a whole face. That works for them, um, and that's great. But I, I find that it's just better to start with the initial planning stages of it. Get the, get that right, you know. This is the foundation that all of the details kind of stick on to. And if we don't get that foundation right, um, then we're going to be fighting against that the rest of the drawing, right? So in this last box, I'm going to try to make intentionally a good bit thinner than the other two. So we're getting a variety there, you know? And isn't that always fun? Like, I don't know if you celebrate Christmas or you celebrate, or if or you might celebrate your birthday or something. Um, some people don't, and some people don't celebrate Christmas or whatever holiday, but if you do celebrate a holiday in which you get gifts, uh, <clears throat> I always like that some, some are thinner and some are thicker, and you kind of try to, your mind tries to guess, like based on the thickness of it, you're like, and how heavy it is, you're like, whoa, like this is, this is pretty, this, this, this could be, you know, for me it would have been like growing up, it would have been like a Transformer or like G.I. Joe or something, that's what I was really into. And again, I'm having that argument with the uh, the water the uh, water heater right now. I feel like I'm I'm mad at that water heater because it's like it's like trying to get your attention over me. So I'm like subtly like really angry <laughs> at that thing. Um, and I'm catching myself like, won't you just be quiet, water cooler or water heater? I want to call it water cooler for some reason. Okay, so I have my initial sketch done. Now it's time to start getting details what I'm going to do is I'm going to lighten up my drawing if you're working digitally you might come in here and just make your layer lighter and then create a new layer right on top I use this this eraser tool oh you know the other thing I like to do I forgot I like to use the smudge tool the smudge pen and the way to think about this if you don't know 
Um, you're going to hear me talk about it a million billion times, but I like to use like a paper towel uh, or a piece of toilet paper, whatever you got. If you have like one of these, I stole this from upstairs from my daughter's room <laughs> or bathroom. Um, if you have a, a Q-tip, you can use this to blend, right? But I want you to just um, sort of like it evens out. Like my art teacher, my art professor in college used to say, he used to say, we knock it back. You kind of even out all of the value across that. So it lightens the whole thing, but it also kind of gives it a nice like gray. And then you build on top of that with new, with new lines, with more lines. So now I'm just, I'm just going back through and cleaning up my drawing a little bit. Notice how I'm moving the, I'm moving the, the art canvas here, or the paper around a lot. I tend to do that when I draw. I'm moving the drawing around a lot. I'm not just drawing like this. I might move like that and sketch like this or sketch like that, whatever's most comfortable. All right, now let's add some of these surface lines, okay? of this ribbon. The first one's this way. Notice this is going parallel. These are all going parallel to each other, okay? And then the other way. This is parallel, parallel, parallel. And then once it hits this edge here, it drops down vertically. I guess this top one, so these just, these just have vertical runners that run down. And then we have our ribbon up top, or our bow, right? Um, the bow almost looks like it has some perspective. It almost looks like it comes this way. Um, like the top of the bow might hit that line right there. Um, that's kind of getting into, um, eh, that's okay. You can do it. It also kind of looks to me like, well, I've made mine kind of like a, a bug. <laughs> Um, like we could put like a little like those look like wings, um, but you also you might come along and and give that a little bit of uh, maybe find a little bit of overlap there. And this one here. I mean, I'm 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 you know here I am saying don't get into the details too soon, and look at me getting into the details, and and feel free yell out at the screen. <laughs> hey, Mr. Mick, you said don't get into the details right away. <laughs> and that's fine. I, I, uh, you know, I make plenty of mistakes. And you're going to see them all. Now we have this coming this way, that going that way. This comes down here. This comes out this way. And then moves down here like that. Right? Then this comes across here, and then it moves down here. So I'm just going back over my drawing. And I'm just, because I'm, I'm more sure of the lines and where they should be now than the first time. Now, um, these ribbons, as, they, as this sort of becomes a thicker ribbon that comes down, again, you feel free to extend these lines out sometimes and just check what what might happen is when you start drawing you might start with something like this and okay so they're supposed to come down and you might start with something like like that right and th there's something that feels weird about that right and if you feel weird about your drawing if you're like something's not quite right resist the urge to judge yourself and beat yourself up resist that urge because we want to do that all the time don't do that How long have you been working on the elements perspective? These are all arguments that I've had with students, so I know I, I know what argument what things you might do or might what thoughts and feelings you might have about this as we're going. And you might be like, click off the video, like this is too hard, I give up. Um, this is a tricky example, so know that sometimes I'll mess this thing up too, and I'll have to you know go well, something's off here, and I'll have to resist the urge to beat myself up as well. I'm going to use my smudge pen just to lighten that up so I don't get rid of it entirely. The problem with that is that I haven't followed the proper perspective, right? It's got to move this way and this way, and so I got 
I gotta check those lines against the other lines. And then this is gonna drop down vertical. Right, so now I've brought, see the difference? See, see the difference there and there? And even here and here? Because these lines got off, because these lines ended up getting off, um, then it would have made this next part off as well. So it, if something feels off about your drawing, chances are you just need to go back and check the structure. And notice that s the lines all relate to each other in some kind of a way. Now let's move on to the next one. Again, we have our overlap here. Boom. And it's, it's kind of like, if I was to actually, I would say my, my overlap is like that, right? Because this one problem, another problem you might have is your drawing is more like this. And you're like, Mr. Mick, I don't get it. Like, what's, what's going on here? Something's not right. Like, or it's like this. You're like, I don't get the bottom looks weird. Well, one, notice where my line comes out. It's coming out of, like, the middle here. And it's also maintaining that angle, right? And then I can connect it to this, and then that, and then boom, it, it falls into place. But if you're having some, that's another just trouble spot. And if you're having some trouble with this drawing, there's a good chance that um, it has to do with that. It has to do with the overlap. And what you need to do is just um, check it and correct it. I just break my elbow. <laughs> okay, don't laugh at me. All right. Uh, here, going this way. And then we're going to extend. Oh, I think I changed my drawing tool. And this comes down. I think, yeah, I think what I can do is do like that. And I can just focus on the drawing. So notice if I extend these out, these are all parallel, right? Again, maintain that parallel parallelism. And then uh, we have our other ribbons that come off. I'm making sure that they stay parallel too. And then once they hit the side, he, this edge here, they drop down and I'm making sure they stay vertical. And again, these verticals are parallel. And this is something I don't think McIntyre talks about, but I think is important to note. There's an implied angle here. There's, there's, you know, things line up with one and five in our compass. Things line up three and seven in our compass, but things also line up vertically in the compass. Actually, it really goes both ways. I never thought about that till just now. But it goes both ways. Vertic uh, vertically and invertically. <laughs> I don't know if that's really the way to think about it. Maybe it is. Invertically. What's the opposite of vertically? Invertically. Down, Mr. Mick. Down is the opposite of up. When people say, what is up? I say the opposite of down. And they're like, uh... You came here for my jokes, I know. For my humor, I know. Here, here, here. I'm just getting those first parts of the ribbon lined up properly. This is a complicated drawing. It is. This lined up, lining these up this way. If you need to pause this example, rewind it, you might need to try it a few different times. Now let's throw some shade on it so I don't have to throw shade at it. I tried to talk into the microphone. Okay, so like I said, I think Bruce McIntyre was a right-handed man because all of his shading lines go that opposite way. I'm left-handed, so mine all come down this way. Um, These, this kind of shading where I'm just making a bunch of thin lines, one next to the other, this kind of shading, I don't know why that did that. It's called, do you know, hatching. Hatching. I'm hatching out some shading. Hatching it. And here you go. 
because we can imagine that the light is maybe coming from this direction or the light's actually probably coming from this direction right but somewhere over here is the sun <laughs> and this part this back part is in shade And if, well, if that back part, part is in shade, then we might actually see some shadow going this way too, right? And then this way as well. Maybe let me drop this hole. Let me finish my hatching here. Oh, come on, water heater. You can do it. Oh. And this happened yesterday too. It's like... about that because it's like no I'm not gonna do that that's dangerous don't ever do that kid <laughs> don't ever touch one of those um all right so some things should be thought and not said whoever said that I have no idea now I'm just I'm just going back through these these details. again I use my blending uh, brush there um, if you're working traditionally like if you're working in pencil I would just use a paper towel to blend that shading a little bit I, that's just something I'm a big fan of and then I might come back in and add another layer of this um, hatching because I like to experiment with going back and forth between uh, like value for shading like the smooth kind of value and um, and using things like lines like hatching lines and stuff and cross hatching lines but look at this little cake look at, oh my god look at this cake <laughs> I'm totally ripping a, a bit off of uh, a comedian that I like Oh my god, I'm ripping off a bit from him. Come up with your own jokes. Joke stealing is a real thing. I mean, I haven't been thinking about that. That's a, that's a whole other thing. I mean, I, I'm not a comedian. But I've been thinking about it with images and stuff, too. Um, you know, because culture is a really interesting thing. And... I, you know, I was teaching uh, prehistoric art for art history to my freshmen, and you can find the elements of perspective back then. <laughs> you know, um, not I'm not saying that the prehistoric man was like, you know, their overlap is messed up, and blah blah blah. But they used it, nonetheless. They used size and they used surface. They used all the elements of perspective, really. I feel like something could be a little bit neater here. So I'm, I'm sort of spending some extra time here on this example, like I, I tend to do. I think we're just about out of time. Um, maybe I'll just spend a minute on that other kind of can futuristic city drawing, because I'm enjoying it. Um, but the other thing is, if you've been using your... Um, if you've been using your like paper towel to blend things, now you can come along with your eraser and look what you can do. I mean, I know I'm doing this digitally, but you can do the same exact thing. You can use your eraser as a drawing tool to pull out the lights. And it's so great. There's just something so beautiful about it. And, and I think I was saying yesterday that there's something, I feel like there's something that happens when you sit and you draw and you create that's just, um, it's just different. To me, it's different than anything else. Uh, it's, you know, for example, like I, I said, I like to play video games. I think they're a lot of fun. And um, sometimes I get really into a game and I'm like, like I, I get um, into like games like, it's like Super Meat Boy, if you've ever played that game. Um, I get into games, uh, like I, I like to get into the Mario games. Um, <clears throat> and I, 
you know, I try to get all the achievements and stuff, you know, and some of the stuff is like really, really difficult. And I'm like the type of person that's like, no, do it again. No, I do it again. No, I do it again until I get it right. And I'll spend like an hour there because I feel like somewhere in some game studio, this person was like, someone really threw down the challenge. They were like, this part of the game is not easy. And only those people that really work hard are going to get it. And I'm like, I'm going to work hard. And I'm going to get it. And and I, I'll keep working. And sometimes I don't actually get it. I, I <laughs> Not that I just give up on the game. I might take a break and come back to it. And uh, if I was to say a game that, that did that for me recently, uh, well, not recently, but within the last few years, was Hollow Knight. It just became so hard. Actually, no. The End is Nigh is one. Um, I don't know if you know any of these games, but these are just some tough games. I'm going through them. I'm giving the outline a little bit of a heavier, um, a heavier go. Uh, I feel like that that's an interesting effect. I like when people do that. I like to kind of do that too. Um, and this is just a simple example, but why the heck not? Um, so, uh, but I feel like you can get into a kind of a zone like when you're doing some like, like like sports, I feel like you can get into that zone too, where you're like, it's the co it's the competitive drive that comes out of you maybe, and you can get really locked in, right? And you're like, man, I'm really locked in, and and there's something that's really unique about that, and some people like really really are into the uh, they're competitive people because there's something about that competition that makes them really feel alive, and and believe me, I've I've liked to play sp I like to play sports, and I can be very competitive. Um, but I think when you get into drawing and creating, it's a little bit different. It's, um, it can be competitive. You know, I, I feel like there's times where I see someone's artwork and I'm, I get jealous <laughs> and, uh, I'm putting, I'm kind of like finding where that wrapper might go underneath just a little bit. That's, this is kind of like going that extra step. I'm going that extra step here in this example just because I'm finishing some things off and thinking while I'm while I'm drawing. I might I might make this this here. We talked yesterday about the value scale. I might push this it's a little bit darker. This side just a little bit darker. Um I you know I might even I was thinking I might even get a bigger brush that can just be used for shading, but I want to keep it like as if I had just a pencil like you have a pencil. Even though I'm doing it digitally, um I want to think like you would have to think and kind of be in your shoes. If I were you, and I think I can do that here actually. No, I can't, I can't not with that. There's a way, like I, for example, when I draw, a lot of times I use my arm like this, and so I can use this the side of, like with an actual real pencil, the side of it for like a thicker line and the tip for a thinner line. So I kind of draw like this, and that's something that my art teacher, whoever, if he ever finds any of my work, Mr. Petty, um, I, when I won Teacher of the Year uh, or Teacher of the District a few years ago for Camden, um, I made a speech about uh, where I talk about him. Um, and I've tried to find him ever since. Mr. Petty, he used to be an art teacher in uh, Philadelphia and was a big influence on me. You know, I would say that he is another one that influenced me to become an art teacher too because he had such a positive influence on me at a time where I needed a positive influence. Um, but I feel like there's, man, look at that, you know? Just that, that um, I don't know, there's just something that's just so much fun about this. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's just, uh, anyway. Um, what was I talking about? I was talking about, yeah, I'm saying that here I am going in on seemingly a simple example. You know, this isn't uh, a fancy figure drawing. This isn't like a Bob Ross landscape. It's just a bunch of boxes, but it's a visual problem, you know? And if you can keep working at it until you get it, get it done right, um, there's something that's just really nice about it. And there's also there can be some 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 satisfaction in knowing that most people couldn't draw this. <laughs> most people can't draw because they give up. And I've talked about that before too. Not, they give up, but they just decide that they can't. 
and part of my thing becoming an art teacher was to show is to get students before they give up and to show them that they can if they want to and even if they don't become artists um, or animators <clears throat> that they can still do this uh, it can still be a language that they can learn to use for, for self-expression. I might give a little bit of a shadow coming off this way too. I might just end with this today because it's just, you know, it's just fun. So the way that I think about, um, you know, the McIntyre stuff, like I said, is like a jumping off point. Uh, you know, I could have drawn little elves climbing all over this thing or you know we could have we could have poked a little doorway into this this could have been the basis of a video game level who knows right oh little little doorway i'm going to actually delete that, delete that. <laughs> uh because i had another idea um Because I, I like to start on like a gray paper or a gray background, or if I have paper or if I have a sketchbook, sometimes it's nice to just even just put in my, a nice like layer of light shading and shadow over the whole paper, do the drawing on top of that. And then you can come along with, imagine I'm using like a thin pointed eraser and I'm just carving out so I have the white of the paper showing through, right? I'm kind of using these as a kind of a surface line where I'm mimicking or the, you know, I'm saying, okay, well, the light is hitting, this is the light, the lightest part here. And then maybe the side, because I kind of have a grayish paper going on. I believe I do. Yeah. Uh, the gray of the paper is that darker value on the side. Again, move, moving the um, moving the canvas around or the paper around to the angle that you find. Actually, you know, I'm gonna undo. I don't want that. I want this. And you don't you don't even have to. It doesn't have to be a fine point. Um, well, I realize I'm actually kind of just painting on white here, but it could be I'm erasing the white of the paper. I don't. I'm not using a white paper, right? Sometimes it's interesting if you can get a hold of it to start with a paper that's not white to draw with and you're like well mr mink it's a it's a dang it's a gd pandemic okay gd is probably not a good term to be teaching the children mr mink now i just flipped it around to see if i flip it around does it still seem to make sense? Does anything stand out and not make sense? Now, looking at it, I probably should have made this a little bit further over this way. And if you're like, Mr. Mick, well, how do I flip it around? I'm actually working on paper. Look in a mirror. Take your drawing and hold it up to a mirror. And when you hold it up to a mirror, things are going to stand out that uh, you didn't see before, right? So I'm just going back through now and saying, okay, well, if I was holding this up in the mirror, what stands out as being a little bit off? And the things that just pop out, they're like, hey, this is a little, you know, I feel like this is probably a little bit, I should bring this in just a little bit this way. Um, yeah, definitely probably gonna move this over a little more this way, right? Things that I'm noticing here. Um, this actually is probably okay. And then I can just oop, flip it around. Now, if you're working, you're working digitally as well. That's easy for you to do. If you're working, like I said, if you're working on pe uh, pencil and paper, you can look put in the mirror, and you'll see in your drawing, reflected in the mirror, you'll see things that are standing out to you. And then you just got to try to remember, maybe write them down real quick. Oh yeah, fix the right side. And, and just like those cans that I turned into uh, uh, a bunch of buildings. This could be turned into, like I think the, one of the previous examples, I turned it into a ziggurat, right? Um, doing some, looking at some um, ancient art. 
Um, but you could turn this into a building. This could be a cool, like, temple and a video game kind of a thing. This could be, um, you know, I mean, this could be some sort of cool, like, Lego man hat. <laughs> Uh, a, a hat on somebody, right? Um, this could be, you know, the beginnings of a cool spaceship flying through space. There's just so much possibility. Um, and if you think of these examples as jumping off points, but it also if you think of it as like, let me practice these examples and get really good at these examples, and then I'm going to be able to draw whatever I want to draw. Because I promise you, if you work on the principles of McIntyre as the basis, the elements of perspective, as the basis of a whole, um, f or as the foundation that you build your art, you build your drawing ability and your art ability on top of, it is a great foundation. And from there, you can go to so many other things. If you, if you want to go event, if, if in your mind, if you're like, you know, someday I want to be able to draw spaceships, like, like, like sci-fi spaceships, start here. If you want to go to figure drawing and you want to draw figures and paint figures like Da Vinci and Michelangelo, the masters, and you're like, I'm just at the beginning and I'm drawing these figures and they look so messed up and I can't, Start here. Slow down. Start here. Start with these boxes. We'll get to figures. We will. And and by practicing this approach, even working on these principles and the examples, when you go back to drawing the figure and you start thinking about that arm moving in space and you think of it as a cylinder that's moving towards you, which seems obvious. Maybe everyone knows that. But how do you move a cylinder towards you, right? One of the examples that McIntyre talks about a lot is we're using this this compass, right? Um, if we think if we think about a foreshortened circle, foreshortened circle, right? Well, he often does this kind of pencil example, right? And then you might attach on a hand, right? You might simplify it. But here, all of a sudden, I'm starting to think about, well, the a cylinder is made of a foreshortened circle. Um, maybe there's some surface lines. Maybe maybe the person's wearing some sort of like cool like arm amulet, amulet thing, and we can use that, um, that, you know, or they're drawing someone that's got like a sleeve, so we can draw their, their clothes. But we're finding those surface lines, right? There's lots of ways that you can take the elements of perspective. And, and this is something that Stanchfield, that's, this is how I came across McIntyre, was Stanchfield, um, and I, I, you know, I, don't, I, I keep talking about this during class because I think that they just were such an influential, uh, so, so, so influential on me um, in, in really learning the, I'm sorry that I just did that, um, really learning how to draw. But, um, Stanchfield would emphasize, like, listen, you know, in, in making the figure look three-dimensional or look, making your cartoon figure, like they'd be working on, like, a, you know, a Disney animated character, like, think about how the arm moves in space, and if you want to simplify it down to, like, in, in a, a kind of how visual space works, think about it in terms of these elements of perspective. And he kept harping on this point to the animators at Disney. So if you want to become an animator at Disney, really get these elements of perspective in your bones and um, get it to be like part of just how you think about creating visual visual objects and visual space and um, it will give you a kind of freedom in drawing that will let you go in any direction you want to go into um, and I've been working on this for years I've been working on this for over 10 years um, teach, you know, working on these principles and also teaching these principles. But if you follow today's class, you'll see I have even thought about some things differently just from revisiting it again. There's kind of so much in here um, that just, it's just a lot to keep going into, but each time you go back through it, it's, it enriches the actual thing itself. Um, kind of like reading a story or watching a movie that you've seen a million times, but then you notice something you hadn't noticed before. Um, and that's what art does. Art is about looking and noticing, and then as you learn to note, as, as you draw, you notice more. And as you learn to draw better, you're going to be able to see more details than you could see before.
So, thank you for coming to today's class. I'm sorry that I started late. Um, I had a bit of a problem with my uh, internet, and I needed to restart my computer, it turns out. It, my computer was mad that I hadn't restarted it in a few days and needed, it, needed a reboot. So I'm going to try to get all that stuff done beforehand uh, in the future. But, you know, I'm going to try to work 1.30 to 2.30 every day. But if I run a little bit late, it might be that there's a techno technical issue. Um, but I haven't missed a day in like two weeks. So I'm going to keep doing this as long as... Um, people are dealing with this pandemic and maybe I'll keep doing it after if, if um, you know, I have at least one subscriber still. <laughs> so thanks for checking it out and have a nice week and I hope everyone's doing well. I hope your family's doing well. I hope you're doing well. If they're not doing well, I hope they recover soon. You know, um, I know everyone is dealing with various degrees of uh, either inconvenience or just straight up suffering right now. And um, if you can, if the class, if my class at all um, has, you know, given you something of, a, of joy and um, <coughs> something of, uh, you know, a good, you finding this class and me finding you as, as some person out there uh, that would like to learn and I get to teach to, then, then something good's come out of this. And, um, you know, there are, there are, uh, positives there are negatives but there's also positives in in life no matter what um, so um, I appreciate um, you just checking out the class if you aren't a subscriber then please subscribe um, if you are K to 12 and would like to be part of the classroom send me an email if you're over 13 if you're under 13 have your parents email me and I'll send them a code um, I'm going to have an elementary and a middle school and a high school classroom at some point. Right now I just have a high school class going. Um, but I'm more than willing to, you know, give feedback to anybody. If you want to email me your work, email me your drawings and get my input on that and get, get some critique from me, that's great. Uh, I'd be more than happy to do that. So um, thanks a lot for, for stopping by and um, I'll catch you later or tomorrow. Tom later being, tomorrow being later, right? <laughs> I'll see you.